Hello everyone, I'm Cryptic Fox, and today we're looking at how to grow the pinch of pepper plant in ideal conditions to get an excellent yield. Last time we looked at how you can grow mealwood in conditions that will give you an excellent yield, and that will produce a lot of food for you. Not only does it give you the, the meal lice off the plant, but also you end up getting the seeds that you can then replant. And at a rate of getting two seeds for every three harvests, it actually gets to the point where you're, you're getting an infinite number of seeds that you're producing, and you can kind of produce mealwood all the time, so why would you want to make anything else? Well, the issue is really just that your duplicants, as you progress in cycles through your, uh, through your colony, they get more and more discerning food tastes, and they want something that's a little bit better than, uh, than what you can get in the meal lice. So when you look in the consumables menu, you can see what their expectation is for the type of food. So standard zero is where they'll kind of level out as they, as they last for a long time. You might start off with somebody who's willing to eat grizzly food, in which case they're more than happy to eat things like meal lice and field rations and muckroot and that sort of thing. But over time, you can see that these things now no longer produce the, a positive effect for them. And it's these colored shaded areas that you really want them to be eating in. So how do we do that? Uh, there are a couple different types of things you can produce. But one of those you can make is the, uh, the pinch of pepper plant, which allows you to make pepper bread. And that will help satisfy your, your duplicates so they don't produce any additional stress. Now, very different from the mealwood, the pinch of pepper plant requires some really specific conditions to grow in, and temperature-wise, uh, the mealwood was relatively easy to grow because you can actually just grow it in an area where the, the temperature conditions are already pretty close to ideal. Your main starting area is very similar to the kind of conditions you need for, uh, for the mealwood. But when you look at the pinch of pepper plant, you often find it growing out in these more hostile environments where the temperature is closer to 40 degrees Celsius. Um, they're often growing in hydrogen because that's where the, the, the hot temperatures are. The pinch of pepper plant requires some pretty specific conditions to grow in. So not only are you again going to need the hydroponic farm tile in order to grow them, but this one you'll actually have to flip over when you're using it as well. So instead of having an upward orientation, you have to set it so it's downward, and that's the direction that the plant needs to grow in. Inside that plant, the plant is going to need temperatures that range from 35 degrees to 85 degrees Celsius. However, to get your excellent yield, the temperature range you want to ride in is between 55 degrees and 60 degrees Celsius. It can be tricky to maintain temperatures that are that hot, but then also to do it in a steady way so that you don't have these um, spikes up and down in your overall temperature. Similar to the other plants, you need a pressure of 750 grams per tile, which is relatively easy to maintain because you just have to get over top of that. And it doesn't matter if you max out the pressure, you just don't want to fall below it. They're irrigated using polluted water. And then for fertilizer, you need phosphorus, which is something that you'll have to hunt for because I don't believe you can actually make phosphorus in the game. So um, these are the conditions you have to, you'll have to shoot for when you're growing your plants. In the farm I created, I decided to make a room that was very similar in shape to the one I used for the mealwood. So I built a room that has a little water trap as an entry, basically just by building a two block high uh, line on either side and then a, a section of blocks across the middle. And you just add some water to it using a water pump and the, uh, the water spout. Fill it up to a point where you've got this, this seal going across and that will help keep the temperature inside the room as well as the air pressure that you're producing. The room itself, I oriented with the plants, uh, the planters across the top for the hydroponic farm, because the plants do have to grow downward. Now these plants do require three tiles worth of space in order to grow, so you're going to have to have, have the, the sufficient room there. I use a gas permeable tile that provides a floor for them to walk on, so when the duplicates go inside, they can reach the plants. Um, but it also gives them space where they can walk above this area that I have below, where the the air pressure comes into the room. Now the air pressure is coming through this air duct that I'm pumping from my oxygen room. And very similar to what I did with the mealwood, uh, mealwood plants, I've just run another line off of my oxygen production and pumped it into this space. It fills up the, this area with, uh, with pressurized oxygen relatively easily, and then once it's at maximum pressure, it, it doesn't really move any air in here anymore, so you're not really wasting air. As you can see, it's a, there's a, a pipe full of oxygen that's just sitting there waiting for an opportunity to go through, uh, but we don't really need to move any more in it. You can certainly use other gases if you're concerned about using oxygen. However, I have a surplus of oxygen in this colony, uh, so it was just as easy to, to use oxygen as any other gas. In terms of maintaining the temperature, this is where things get a little bit tricky. So setting up the room is really simple. Setting it up so it has the right oxygen environment is really simple also. You just pump oxygen in. But it's the temperature that becomes really challenging. As you can see, the temperature I'm averaging in here for the oxygen is between 56.4 degrees, 55.5, 56.1, 55.8. So I've managed to hit the ideal balance in temperature in my room, and it stays very, very stable. I have two space heaters located at the bottom on either sides of the room, only and sort of connected to a thermal switch. Only in scenarios where the room should happen to dip down in temperature, these will turn on in order to try to try to push that temperature back up to even things out again. 
they almost never turn on for me. All of the heat that's being produced in my room that's keeping it the right temperature is coming through this liquid pipe that's radiating, uh, radiating the warmth out into the room to hit that ideal temperature. And this is how I've set up my radiator. So I'm pumping the, the polluted water from below that's producing, that's providing the fertilizer for all, each of these, these plants. So I ran the pipe through the tile and I have individual branches going off to each one of the different, uh, each one of the different hydroponic boxes. And you can see that it moves relatively slowly because they're only consuming it at a, at a reasonable rate. And I don't have this on high speed either. So this will feed all the irrigation that we need through into the planters. This bottom pipe here, I actually filled up with, with hot water and snaked all the way through, uh, all the way through the space in order to act as a radiator. The water that's contained in here is about 56 degrees right now because it's had a, little bit, had a little bit of time to cool down. Periodically, I might have to actually have to vent the water out of this area to get hot water back inside because the water down here you can see is at 63 degrees. This is now at 56 degrees, which is maybe a little bit on the low side. When building the pipes, you want to build these on a wolframite because that has the highest rate of conductivity. So the hot water going inside will allow the room to increase in temperature. In order to keep my, my my water at the right temperature, I've got a channel going through here where I've got polluted water that's flowing down into this space down here where it then gets heated. In here, I've placed two liquid tepidizers, which are connected to a thermo switch. This thermo switch is set to a temperature of 64.5 degrees. Now, ignore the pressure threshold. That's a mislabeling on this item. This is actually the thermo switch. And I have it set so if the temperature falls below 64.5 degrees, these two liquid tepidizers will turn on to help push the temperature back up. Now, I've used heavy watt wire for this connection between the liquid tepidizers and the thermo switch because if for any reason this breaks, I don't want to have to send my duplicates all the way down inside here to try to fix it. So instead, I've just sort of circumvented the potential for a break. This pump is then sitting behind the thermo switch. And it's pumping the water that's been heated by the liquid tepidizers up through the piping, up into the space here, where it can continue to feed irrigation into the hydroponic farm tiles. And then I have a branch going off of it in order to feed the hot water into the room that will allow for the temperature change. All in all, this system is fairly energy intensive, but by, by pumping through water that's in around 64.5 degrees, it's had a chance to radiate out heat. And over a, over a period of about 20 or 30 minutes, this room here got to be the ideal temperature and it's extremely stable. It does not see much fluctuation up or down. Now, as the water that's in the pipes is beginning to cool and it starts to, the temperature starts to dip down, these space heaters might have to turn on more frequently, and in that instance, I might actually want to build a little outlet here to vent some of the hot water out and allow for hotter water to be pumped in, into the pipe. Once the piping is filled with hot water again, I can simply sever the line at the end and then allow the water just to stay contained within here. This water that's inside of this, this little radiation space in here will keep the, this room at a nice toasty temperature between 55 and 60 degrees which makes for perfect growth opportunities. As you can see, these plants are showing, they are showing good yield. However, when you click on them, you can see they are actually pr uh, predicted to have an excellent yield and a 111.1. It's currently achieved a harvest rating of 64.9 at uh, with uh, growth at 69%, but uh, you can see there are quite a few with a little pinch of pepper uh, pods on here. That's a, kind of a mouthful. This is just one method of creating an environment to grow the ideal pinch pepper plants and get the most yield out of them. I'm sure there will be other ones that come out, and there are certainly many, many different ways to play this game. However, I found this method works especially well for me. It is very energy intensive for initial setup because you're running liquid tepidizers. You're potentially running space heaters that will consume extra energy. This this liquid pump has to run a lot initially to fill up with water, but once that once that's all in place, the amount of uh, energy consumption drops down dramatically and you're only periodically using the liquid tepidizers. The pump is only pumping periodically and these space heaters turn on very infrequently. I hope this design helps you out and you manage to come up with something that helps you grow pinch of pepper plants in an ideal environment in your colony. I'm as always Cryptic Fox. I'll see all of you next time.